What are you doing in Dallas, actually? Well, I'm doing television um, mm -hmm. tonight, and I'm doing uh, doing interviews up until Thursday. Then I come back um, and then get ready for the trumpets for the Feast of Trumpets. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, so it's it's been you know it's crazy, but it's good. It's it's a god crazy thing. I'm just you know just surfing the wave. So yeah. in the book, the Book of Mysteries, do you go into any detail at all about any of the holidays that the Bible talks about? That what those kind of uncover? You know, like Elul 29, you know, mm -hmm. being the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, Yom mm -hmm. Kippur, following that. Do you cover any of that in yeah. the book? I cover, it covers every one of that, every, every part of it, because what it is, is, you know, it's this, it, you know, there's a narrative behind it, but it's the revealing the mysteries. It can also be devotional. Every day is another mystery. But so what happens is that it's a year in the desert, you know, with, with all these, all these things being revealed. Yeah. But at the same time, the, the, what I did is you don't have to do it this way, but if you take it, if you do it every day, like, and if you take it from putting day one as January, what'll happen is when you get to the time in the biblical calendar, you get to the time of like Passover, you get to the time of the resurrection, you get to the time of Shavuot, Pentecost, get to the time of tabernacles or trumpets or everyone, it will, you will have a mystery at that time that will open up that. So it gears it, it goes according to that. So actually, you know, you don't have to even know that, but it actually doesn't, one of the things really cool about it is that I didn't realize this when I wrote it because several of the mysteries just happened to line up on the exact day. We didn't, before we even tried to do it, it was God already did it. Mm -hmm. So you'll actually be going through the biblical year on top of everything. So there'll be a mystery that way. And it's the mystery is to apply to your life. So every wow. holiday you will have something on that time. That's amazing. Cause you know, when I first met you, it happened to be at the very time that God had told me to read about, learn about and keep yes. all of the holidays and to discover the the Hebrew calendar and live on the Hebrew calendar. And so literally, I met you right after that. Um, we're talking months after that. So I had just done my first Pesach, Passover. Uh, and then I meet you 50 days later. I don't know if you remember that, but it was on Shavuot. And yes. I have an interview like, Danny, you know that, that you know, tonight is Shavuot. I'm like, tell me more about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I felt so very blessed that here God had really convicted my heart about keeping the, the Hebrew calendar. And then who does he put in front of me? You know, a rabbi, <laughs> not only a rabbi, but Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Of all of the times that we could have an interview, our first interview that we did all those years ago together, really? Yeah. Now, if that wasn't the hand of God, I don't know what was. It wasn't like an accident. So I got to do my first Shavuot with you at yeah. your church. Hey, and, I, and I still, by the way, I have the trumpet, the, the shofar that you gave me that night. And my oh. grandchildren and I blow that every single Shabbat. Every Shabbat afternoon, oh. after we finish rolling the challah, then we go outside and we start to announce with the, with the blowing of the shofars and the one that you gave me, um, they blow uh, to alert everybody, hey, Shabbat. Shabbat is coming. It's time to close up your shops. Come on in. It's time to have a celebration. So yeah. what, a, what a crazy thing, the timing of how God keeps that. So that let's talk is. about that. Let's just talk about one of those mysteries, okay? Let's talk about Rosh Hashanah because that is like, that is one holiday. Well, all of the holidays, I think everyone who is a believer should keep it just for the richness and the reminder and the beauty and the drawing that God does. It really changed my life to follow all of those. It, it enhanced my life and enlightened my life. It fulfilled some things. I won't stop doing it. I will never stop doing it because it is such a precious time between me and God. And I feel like I get closer and closer to him and also in greater discovery of who I am in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. My identity in him. So let's talk yeah. about Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, and this, you know, people are listening and to say that, you know, you don't have to be Jewish. You, no. you know, if you love God and if you love Jesus, you, you, it's part of it. And he, God, this, these let's are say, if you God, read the Bible, it never God. said not to. It never, ever said not to do this. <laughs> Ugh, it makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's because, and it's not that it's a legalistic thing. It's that it's a beautiful thing, a beautiful and it's going to show you more of God. And I'll give you an example. You know, I'll get we'll get to Rosh Hashanah. One of the some of the mysteries in there. One of the mysteries in the book is called the, is the seven mysteries of the age that God has set up the entire age 
according to the Hebrew year. It's I mean, true. Every, every <laughs> single major event falls on the exact Hebrew holiday, and that's not an accident. No. But it's not. But people, you know, the the first ones are the spring holidays. Well, that you got Passover. You got you got Messiah dying on Passover. You got you got the the day of the first fruit. That's the day he rose as the first fruit, yes. resurrection day. You have the day of the Spirit coming. That's Shavuot. That's the Hebrew yes. feast. Everything in order. But the thing is, that tells us where we are. We're in the harvest period of the age, mm -hmm. and it means that the next thing to come are the trumpets. And so one of the things is that, you know, there are people who know about those first things because they're in the New Testament, Jesus fulfilled them. Yeah. But they, the, the, the fall holy days are a mystery to Christians because not just because he hasn't fulfilled them yet in what he's going to do. They're all about the second coming. Mm -hmm. So it's no accident. You want, and, and you know, in certain times in the book, the teacher takes the student into a chamber called the chamber of scrolls. Mm -hmm. And there he opens up mm -hmm. all these scrolls and reveal, and another one called the chamber of vessels where he shows these things we're talking about, these ancient vessels. Well, well, the thing is, if you read the Bible, it's not an accident. The, in the Hebrew year, the trumpets comes at the end. Yeah. Well, in the age, if you read the, about the end times, you read yeah. the end of the Bible, what do you see in the book of Revelation? Trumpets. trumpets. Yep. What, what does it say? God says, I'm going to come with a trumpet sound. Yes. That, you know, the resurrection, trumpet sound. Everything's going to be trumpet. So, so the amazing thing is, if you read the book of Revelation, which is the end, what's coming, we should read it. It has, it's all about the autumn holy days. It begins yep. with trumpets. Then you have Yom Kippur, the day of the Lord, when you meet the Lord. And then you have tabernacles, the kingdom of God in heaven. Yes. You know, so it's so perfect. And the other thing is, I'll share how much this applies to everybody, whether you ever heard about this before or not. One of the mysteries in the book is called the seven mysteries of your life. And that is that God actually appoints your life. If you know God, your life is appointed according to these holy days. Mm. And they go in order. They go from the beginning to end. And you are in one of them now, if you're a believer, and it's going to tell you even where you're heading. So that's how amazing God is. And that's how amazing th this is. What you're talking about is for everybody. Yes, it really is. And it's enriching. Okay, so let, let's go here. So. Yeah. I really believe, and, and I, I've had this too, because I've trained a lot of our clients. Um, I've talked a lot about this, and I knew that when God was walking me in this journey of, of uh, the, all of those festivals, that it wasn't just for me, but I felt like it was, and I told you and I have had this discussion privately on the phone and in person, that I felt like part of my calling was to backfill what was robbed from all of the believers, the Christians, how it's almost like the Christian faith is kind of floating in the air and it's been disassociated with its roots, but the roots just add the foundation and identity and oh. richness and blessing. It really is a blessing to keep Shabbat. It's a blessing to keep the holidays. But Rosh Hashanah is one that I find to be so outrageously powerful and useful and so needed in our world today, where it's 10 days of repentance. Yes. 10 days of repentance to who? To our fellow man. Our husbands, our wives, our children, our co-workers, our bosses, our church members, the guys at the grocery store, the postman, whoever it is that we may have, you know, offended, gave the wrong look towards, kind of bit off their head <laughs> in that moment. We're short with, we're, we're paying attention. Whatever it was that we did, these 10 days of going, okay, Father, show me. Who do I need to ask forgiveness from? Who could not benefit from doing that for 10 days out of an entire year? Who? Yeah. Yeah. Forgiveness and brings healing. The Bible says to confess and you will be healed. Forgiveness brings healing. Confession brings healing. Forgiveness also shuts the door against the hand of the enemy because we know his devices and he uses unforgiveness. This is what the Bible says. He uses unforgiveness as a doorway into our soul to mess with us. And so this 10 days set apart to really search out our heart, to lay our soul before him and to go and make it right before man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Danny, this is this goes with the whole thing. For instance, you know, you're talking about, you know, trumpets to this. Well, the trumpet well, not only has a prophetic thing and not only is about the, about what's going to come, but it's also about eternity. It's a wake up call. And it's yeah. telling us it's re it's reminding us. It's like the it's like the trumpets of heaven. Yeah. It's reminding it's reminding us that we don't have forever here. Yeah. We have a limited time. And even those 10 days of all, you know, there's there is actually I don't know if you know it because I, I think you got the book. But but the thing is, I'm going to send you all a special copy. But the thing is that there's a there's a mystery called the Yomim Nora. 
Nevi'im, which are called the days of awe. And that's what you just were talking about. Those 10 days, days are called the awe. days of awe or the awesome days. Yeah. Well, what it's saying, it's... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. I want to give yeah. you plenty of time to talk about it. we got to cut to a break right now. The okay. days of awe. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. We're drawing this from his most recent book, The Book of Mysteries. Go to Amazon.com. Download the Kindle right now. You can read it on your on your smartphone, your iPad, your i whatever you got. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Coming up next, Rabbi Khan explains what's really behind the days of awe, and it relates directly to your future. Stay tuned to The Danny Johnson Show. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. I just heard this amazing story. One of our clients had written us telling us that they had used job domination and unlimited success and has absolutely exploded their career. He said, Danny, I don't know where I'd be today without job domination and unlimited success. Listen, do you want more recognition from your coworkers? Do you want to be recommended to people all over the world? Do you want to be somebody that is highly sought after? Listen, if you're in a dead-end place where this gentleman found himself but then learned new strategies and changed everything in his work life, and obviously this has resulted in higher bonuses and pay raises, you're next. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Job Domination right now. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880, job domination. That's what you need. It's time for you to dominate the job market and break through the rut that you're in. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. Do you know that you are here for a purpose and for a reason? Wouldn't it be awesome for you to have the revelation that everything in your entire life up to this point was for a profound and unique purpose, far greater than anything you could ever imagine, hope for, more than you could ever pray for. I believe that you're on the path of discovering that, especially today. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, international best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author, millions and millions of copies of his books flying off the bookshelves. He's here with us again today. We're talking about his most recent book, The Book of Mysteries. Read it. Get it now. You're going to get sucked into so much great truth that's going to illuminate inside of your soul. It's going to lift you up, edify you, encourage you, help you to believe, help you get over some things and see a future that's far brighter than the past you just walked from. Jonathan, we were just talking about in the last segment, the days of awe, the feast of trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, which again, to me, is the most, most, I can't say most important, most useful, but definitely something of great use for the body of the Messiah, the body of Christ, the body of believers. That, and even if you're not one, just for 10 days, you set apart 10 days to go and make things right with everyone you work with. Like, 
Come on, you know when you've given a dirty look. You know when you've messed up, and you just kind of let it kind of just go water under the bridge and just leave it there. Let's pretend like it never happened. It happened. You know it happened. You know it every time you see the person. Both of you can feel it. The contention is there. But what if you went once a year for 10 days to clean up all striving, all contention, and you were the big man, big woman, the humble one, honestly, that goes and says, I wronged you. I lied. I cheated. I stole. Whatever it was. I gossiped behind your back. I, I didn't pay attention to where I was supposed to. I didn't meet that deadline. That hurt you. That hurt your career because I didn't meet the deadline. I didn't follow through with my word. Please forgive me for ignoring you. Please forgive me for not paying attention. Please forgive me. I didn't clean the house like I should have. Whatever it is, you get that off of your chest. You get the opportunity to receive the forgiveness regardless if they give it to you or not. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because <laughs> right after Rosh Hashanah, it ends with Yom Kippur. And that's the day of repentance between you and God. And he wipes the slate clean. You know what, Rabbi? As soon as I began to practice this one, you know what I found out what happened? I got the renewal of my salvation. I got the renewal of the joy of my salvation. You know, we often forget about that time when we first come to the knowledge of receiving the Messiah. We often forget the filthy numbskull that we were and how we were found bloodied, disgusting in every way. We forget about how much he has transformed us. But during Ram Kippur, Ram, Yom Kippur and, and Rosh Hashanah, it's a reminder of that. And it also causes me to be more merciful moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 these famous things, these things, the days of awe or the awesome days, one of the mysteries in there. And, that, and here's the thing, Danny, it begins with the sounding of the trumpet, yeah. which is, which I'm going to take it to a cosmic level. And that is that it's telling you that here's the trumpet, get ready because one, because, because you got 10 days on the calendar where you're going to stand before God. Well, it's saying we're all going to stand before God. And so this is the trumpets and you got, then you have the days of all to prepare, get right with man, get right with God, do what you have to do because you're going to stand before God. It's eternity is coming. So what are the days of all the days of all in, in the most cosmic level? These you're the days you have on earth are the days of all. These are your awesome days. Mm -hmm. They're limited. You only have, you know, you have eternity for eternity, but you only have this life once in an eternity. Yeah. So whatever good you would do, do it now. Whatever you would get right with God, don't say tomorrow, do it now. Yes. Whatever you have to forgive, forgive now. Yeah. Whatever you need to sow your love, do it now, because these days that you have on earth are precious, are temporary, are, are, are whatever you do is going to touch eternity. These are your days of awe. Hmm. Amen. Amen. You know what? I have a confession to make. I've never really focused on, pondered on, put a lot of thought or prayer into eternity. I really mm. haven't. I haven't. Uh, my walk with my Father in heaven has been so rich and so intimate and so personal that I truly do everything I do to please him as a daughter wants to see the smile on her father's face. You know what I mean? Not to get yes. something from him. I've, yes. I've gotten far more than I ever would deserve. And yes. I certainly haven't received what I deserve for my sin. So, yes. so it's not about that, but I've really never thought about it. But in this next segment, after we come back from the break, let's yeah. talk about your perspective about eternity and what we do here, how it results awesome. in there. This is Danny Johnson with Jonathan Kahn. We'll be right back. Be sure to tell a friend about The Danny Johnson Show. It just might be the key to the breakthrough they need. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. 
call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. My name is Anders and I'm from Latvia. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, I was a struggling English teacher back home. I had a language school that I started when I was 21 and uh, had grown it uh, to be pretty okay in my city. But at the same time, I had uh, acquired a debt of $60,000. In a matter of eight to nine months, I got rid of my debt. And by 2011, we had our first million dollar year. This has been amazing. We grew our school from about 100 students to 2,000 students and I can only highly recommend for you to come to the next event and be part of this community and learn the tools that will help you to succeed. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, my family and I were hemorrhaging under the pressures of debt. Since attending First Steps to Success in January of 2014, my family and I have paid off over $147,000 in 19 months. We're completely consumer debt free, we have restored relationships, and our business is growing at a rate of 15% at every event. Your next step is to sign up for the next First Steps to Success and start creating your own story. My name is Jeff Conyers and prior to First Steps to Success, I was a struggling business owner. I had discovered that my business account went negative 5,000 and uh, I, feel, I realized that I did not have a business plan and I needed to do something. Fast forward to one year after, I have now created, um, just by implementing the tools at First Up Success, uh, over $50,000, created another business, improved my personal and business relationships. Man, it's like the story is forever changing and just it just gets better and better. I don't know about you or what you're going through, but I would highly recommend getting to First Up Success. Prior to plugging into First Steps of Success, we were drowning under a mountain of debt. We were heading to divorce court. We had failing businesses and toxic relationships. Since plugging into First Steps of Success, our marriage has been restored. We have paid off over $56,000 in 11 months. We've helped our community pay off over $300,000 in 14 months. My business has grown in over 600% in four months. And for the first time, I can say I'm just loving life. I have great relationships. So if you are find where you are, then this event is not for you. But if you're ready to reach your goal and to change your life, then I highly recommend that you get registered for the next event. Hi, my name is Jill Kearns. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Prior to coming to First Steps to Success, uh, my husband and I were struggling financially and were uh, hurting um, in our relationship a lot. Uh, we needed um, more time together and we just were struggling with that because of the finances. And so uh, since plugging in, we've actually paid off over $280,000 in debt. We are completely debt free. And more than anything else, the look on my husband's face of relief and um, an excitement about where our future lies and the traveling and the fun, enjoyable times that we'll get to spend together as a family is totally worth it. So if you want to have better relationships with your significant other, your children, if you have a desire to um, to be completely debt free and released from that bondage for whatever reason, uh, whatever the burdens are, your next step is to get to First Steps to Success right now. So prior to getting started to DannyJohnson.com, I was a college dropout. I was working a, a bottom of the barrel type job. I started plugging into her training. Um, I've skyrocketed through the ranks of Corp America. I've tripled my income in the last five years. Uh, that's all fine and Danny, but it wasn't, uh, there's a part of me that had the part missing. So um, I ended up using Danny's prospecting skills and I ended up meeting the love of my life. Uh, since then, we've paid off $32,000 of debt since October 2014 uh, so get here get here now this is the greatest thing ever you have to see this the, the skills and strategies Danny teaches are unbelievable they totally took someone like me with no education and helped me just like multiply my efforts so you need to be here this is your chance this is your shot Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up 
press play and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. What multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Have you ever wondered what the future holds? Have you ever been in that place where you thought, does my life really mean anything here and does it really matter in the hereafter? Joining me today is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, international best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author. He's also a rabbi who has a church in New Jersey, father, husband, dedicated, devoted man of God with an incredible high level of integrity. Truly, honestly, somebody who has impacted my life for the better for the last several years, not only through his books, but also personally, as a personal friend. He's spoken things into my life that has caused things to move in me and to, to grow in places where I needed to grow. He's been that water on a desert, dry land. And there are so many things that he has said and done that he has no idea the impact that it's made in me, as well as in thousands upon thousands of our clients and viewers like you who are watching right now or listening on the radio. Jonathan, eternity. You know, it dawned on me years ago, we, um, my husband and I, we had uh, renewed our vows 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we went on a honeymoon because our first time we didn't have a honeymoon. And he let me pick, and I'd always dreamt about going to Bora Bora. I heard about how beautiful it was. We went. I cried when I landed there because the beauty was so awesome. It was, mm. it was like, it was like a different world. It was fake. It was like a green screen. It had to be animated. There's no way that this could be real. And I remember saying to my husband, I said, "You know, I've never really thought about heaven. I've really never thought about." you know, going there or anything like that. It's just never been a conversation in my head or in my heart. My relationship with him is so personal, so here, so now. Yeah. And after seeing Bora Bora, I said, now I understand what they mean by the beauty of the Lord. Because if, if heaven looks anything like this, <laughs> I want a first ticket now. <laughs> How do I get there? But I've really not thought about it even, even after that. It just my walk with God has never been about heaven. It's been about here and him and his love being communicated to people and rescuing people and deliverance and redemption and reconciliation and healing. So I want to learn from you about your perspective on eternity. Yeah, first, yeah, there, 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 is, a, there is a stream of mysteries that are in the book called The Mystery of the Eighth Day. Now we know we you know there, there's one day that God appoints on a sacred calendar. It's the very last day. It's a total mystery. It's the very last day of a sacred calendar. It's called the. It's something in Hebrew. It's called the gathering of the eighth day. Mm -hmm. What is the eighth day? Well, seven. The seventh. You know, you got seven days in the week. That's it. Seven yeah. speaks of the end. It's final. What's the eighth day? The eighth day is what happens after the end. The eighth day is that the day that breaks out of out of time and space. Breaks out of when you read the end of the Bible, you read you read Revelation. You got all these seven, seven, sevens. You got yeah. seven trumpets, seven angels, everything, because mm -hmm. it's the end. So you have seven. It's the end. But but then when you get to the last two chapters, it's not that anymore. You enter the eighth day. The eighth day is eternity. The eighth day is but but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, the eighth day, heaven, is not just for then. It is for now. People have this idea that it's only, well, we're trying to get into heaven. No, the, the ultimate thing about, about salvation is not trying to get into heaven. It's letting heaven get into you, yes. letting letting the eternal get into your life here and now. So, so Danny, it's not that you're not uh, not about heaven. You are. It's that your, your heaven begins now. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it goes on forever. I mean, that's true, but it be, it's got to begin now or you're not, you're not going on then. And so one of the mysteries, there's several mysteries about entering the heavenly life now or how we are to live in the eighth day now. You know, Jesus... When he, Messiah, he rose on the first day of the week, Sunday, but it's also the eighth day of the week. It's the power to live in heaven now. You know, you know, believers meet often on Sunday morning. You know, that's one. It's the first well, day that's of the, the week. Eighth, that's the eighth day. That's the eighth day. You know, the word, the word, I'll give you another one. The symbol of the spirit in, you know, is, is the oil, you know, anointed with the oil dripping down, you know, well, the word for oil in Hebrew is the, is the word shemen. Well, shemen 
Actually, the word for eighth is shemini. It's the sa- it's basically the same, same word. Root, yep. it, the spirit gives you the power to live now in the heavenly life. Yes, we are to have the hope that that we ha- we need to have that hope about where we're going. It gets better, and and that's it's not here isn't the end. It's only part of it. It's going to be answered. It. But the heavenly life begins now, and we are to actually live in the eighth day even now, even as if our life, our earthly life, was done, and now we have the freedom to live in heaven. So, 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 you know, Danny, it's it's really who you are. You are you are doing. You know, Messiah is heaven come down to earth now. It's eternity here and now. It's forever here and now. So the thing is that you are. It's just you begun it. You know. Mm-hmm. So the the key is we have the power to not just wait to get into heaven, yeah. but let heaven get into us that we yes. can live it now and go on forever. And I can say honestly, I I experienced that. I absolutely yeah, experienced that. I experienced his presence, his love, his voice, his direction, his truth, his foundation, his strength. Um, so that helps me to understand a little bit more. But looking at um, eternity, right? You know, there's different people that have different uh, opinions about, you know, what you do here determines how you live there. Okay. Speak to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, a, a number of mysteries like, like that. Here's the thing. that It's, it's heaven... And in the Bible, heaven and earth are actually connected together. Mm-hmm. And eternity is connected. We're connected both ways. What, you know, it says, it says what you do here, you're storing up treasures forever. You know, yeah. what you do, whatever good you do, you don't lose it. Uh, you know, there's, there's something because, you know, as you get to the end of the book, it gets more into heaven. And there there's a there's a word, you know, that 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 day I told you about, which is that the mystery of that eighth day, the, the word it's called, it's called, it has the word, uh, you don't have to know it, but the word is atzeret. Mm-hmm. And atzeret means to hold on to, to preserve, to keep. And what it's saying is in heaven, all the good things of this life, you, it stays. All the good stays. All the love that was done for the Lord stays. All the things you did purely, they, you got them forever. What you do, all the you know, the bad passes away, but the good you hold on to, so you're not losing. So, wow. so, so there's a link between the two. So, so our life, you know, when we're in heaven, we can we can give thanks for what happened on earth. We're going to be rejoicing on the blessings that are forever. Wow. But what now we're on earth, you're to live with the blessings of heaven. Wow. We're to join it together. The key is join it together. Jesus, Messiah, is the joining together. And Danny, one of the other myst- some of the other streams of mysteries in Hebrew is that there's really no past, present and future there's yep. you know there are things we use it but it's really not yep. in hebrew you can have future events that are already finished you know so so we, we have that means we have the ability one of the mysteries is how to live from the future you live from who you're going to be you yes. live from heaven to earth as it is for, on earth as, as it, it is, is in, in heaven, heaven. Yes. yes so you live from the heavenly person you're going to be you live from the victory you don't wait to make them you live from the victory now amen amen man you know there's something so powerful with what you were saying everything you say is powerful. Uh, but uh, when you when you were talking about, you know, the storing up treasures in heaven, um, I mean, you know the work that, that I do and how our company yes. is 100 percent. I don't take a salary and 100 percent of the profits go straight to building houses for the extreme poor and taking care of orphans and all of that. I don't do that for storing up treasures in heaven. Um, I do that um, to please my father in heaven. I do that because he's given so much and I want to extend his love and his grace and his mercy and his awe to those who are living in darkness and have nothing. Um, I don't do it to get something from him. I feel it's such an honor and a privilege. But hearing you say, you know, that we store the the good we do here, we store up treasures in heaven. And right away, I thought, you know, so you said all the good that we do makes me right away go, oh, wow. And all the bad. It's not there because yes. of the blood, Dama yes. Vey Yeshua, because yes. of the blood of Jesus that, yes. that he shed, washes our sin clean, gives us a clean slate, and it is no more. It's gone as far as the east is from the west. He remembers it no more. That for those of us who are in Messiah, there is no condemnation. Think about that for a minute. Think about that fact that all the good that we do is stored up in heaven, but there's no bad, there's no spot, there's no blemish, there's no, no disgust, there's, there's nothing that's defiled, it's not foul, it's not tainted, it's not questioned, it's not even questioned, because you can just imagine 
the people who are doing good in the world are often questioned by man. You know, they're, they're judged, you know, oh, he's probably this or she's probably that, or, you know, they're probably just doing that for recognition, or they're just doing that just so they would be known for that, or they're just doing that to help grow their business. There is none of that in yes. eternity. There's none of that in heaven. And so what I hear you say is that we're supposed to live in that place now. Then yes. that means that the words of man prejudging or judging us or questioning our motives mean nothing because we're yes. living in this place of being completely washed, clean and spotless and, and, and no sin, no defilement. But we're living in that place of the good works that we do causes people to praise the Father in heaven. And if there are people who are not going to praise the Father in heaven for the good works that they see you do, that's on their own head. That's blood on their own hands. That is between them and God. So powerful. Okay, so I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. I can listen to you. I have listened to you for hours and hours and hours and hours because I get all of your sermons and I listen to them and they're so profound and amazing. When we continue with Jonathan Kahn, again, the book, the book of mysteries, we're going to dive into another mystery here in this next segment. I know you're enjoying listening to him as I am. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. You've heard the analogy between the Christian faith and a marriage, right? But you've never heard it like this. Listen as Rabbi Khan explains next on The Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up press play and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. So um, four years ago in July, we showed up to our first Danny Johnson event, our first First Steps to Success. And we were completely desperate in every area of our life. At the time, I thought it was just because of our finances, but then I figured out pretty quickly that it was because of my lack of people skills that we were where we were. Um, we, we sat in the front row, we got fr um, fast track, we sat in the front row right in the center next to some amazing people because we, um, we were so hungry, so desperate, so broken, and I pretty much cried through the entire event, honestly. and. Um, when she did the, the war on debt, um, which she will show you, you know, this afternoon, I went back immediately and got it. Um, she had just started talking. I heard a couple of stories and I was like, if they can do it, I know we can do it. So we went back and got it and listened to it on the way home in the car because we drove from Michigan all the way to, um, to Missouri. So we listened to it in the car, and when we got home, we immediately got our papers out, we wrote down our plan, and we started applying it. And within 14 months, we paid off over $62,000 worth of debt. Um, we never in a million years thought that was possible. Um, there's so much that has happened in the last four years, and um, I'm the person that wants the results immediately. I don't like the process of getting there. I want to just get there. But I've learned to appreciate the process um, over the last four years and just seeing the transformation that has happened in us. Uh, personally, we, we individually experienced different things and we experienced a lot of things together. I was paying our bills. I was um, completely disrespectful to my husband and didn't really know how bad it actually was. And um, so that, has, that part of our life is still improving. I can say we're a work in progress. It takes time, and we have grown so much. Uh, we showed up. My wife, I didn't know this at the time, but she was battling thoughts of suicide. I had no idea. Um, I thought I was being a perfectly good husband. I did my best to serve her, you know, be a great guy. But what she needed was somebody who would step up and be a leader in our marriage. That's not who I was. And I was totally emasculated, physically emasculated by there's someone in our church, the pastor, and so we felt the brokenness of a church having to leave and just hurt, you know, and devastated. Um, one of the biggest breakthroughs started in our marriage is when Lucy started being a wife to me. 
And I, as a leader, I should step up, right, take action first, be the initiator. She did it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a completely different person. And I can tell you, our marriage has just, it's, it's amazing the difference between her feeling suicidal, me stepping down as a leader, to me taking the initiative and just looking her in the eyes and saying, honey, thank you for allowing me to be your leader. And she just melts every time. This is awesome. So. <laughs> So let me just tell you this, guys. If you're struggling, or you're broke, you're wondering what your next step is, hey, just take action. Write, follow those notes that you just took. Take action and do it because your story is going to be here, and people are going to be inspired by your story. So are you all ready to take notes? All right, let's do this. Help me welcome Miss Danny Johnson, America's favorite millionaire, to the stage. The way you look at things is about to change. This is The Danny Johnson Show. I don't know if you know this or not, friend, but your life is about to change. You know, sometimes we're walking on a path on the journey called life, and we never really know when there's gonna be something that impacts it. You know, I will never forget being homeless 26 years ago. I will never forget wanting to take my own life. I will never forget feeling so hopeless because my parents hated me, my father gave me up for adoption. I'd been molested. I'd been grabbed by the throat, shoved up against walls. I'd been cursed at from the time I was a little, little kid until I left the home. Abandoned by my husband, friends, embezzled by a business person, <laughs> thinking life will never be good and it will always be harsh. It will always be horrible and it will always be without love. I was wrong. I don't know what you have experienced in your life, but if you believe anything like I did, today you're gonna get some truth. It's all for a purpose and a great one. Joining me today is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, international best-selling author, an incredible man that carries truth and revelation with him. He's impacted my life. If you've read his books, he's impacted yours as well. Jonathan, The Book of Mysteries, your most recent book. We can find it at Amazon.com, Walmart, all the bookstores, anywhere, <laughs> probably airports. Congratulations for, again, on your third book. Um, it's not easy to write books, that's for sure, or to tour books and all of that. But let's go through another mystery in this next segment that you feel is really important for people to understand today. Yeah, this is, the, I love this one. And, th and th this is... This is one of the streams, so it goes throughout the book, and that is that you know they're they're in the desert, and the teacher is showing them. Every time you say that, by the way, because you know I've been to Israel so many times, and I led a group, and we started in the desert in a tent. Yes. We lived in a Bedouin <laughs> tent, right, the first night. Yep. So when you say the tent, when you say the desert and the vessels, I can see the cave, like I can yep. see it. And so yep. if you're listening right now and you're hearing him say that, Google it. Google the desert. Google the Judean desert. Google the caves where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Google the vessels. Get the picture in your head so you can see, like physically with your own eyes, and begin to internalize what this actually looks like. I love the way you talk. <laughs> and and there's a and there are people living in the desert who are dwelling in tents, and they're dwelling, yes. they're living like Bedouin. They're living as Still if they were in the day. Bible times. Yeah. So what happens is throughout the book there is a wedding that begins. Mm. goes through the it prepares for goes through and then comes to its conclusion at the end and and they witness it the teacher witnesses you know shows the student throughout the whole book until it gets to the end well here's the thing then one of the greatest mysteries in the bible i mean it sums up the whole bible sums up existence sums up your life is the mystery of the biblical hebrew wedding mm. and the mystery of the bride and groom and in a nutshell here's how it i'll do it real nutshell here's how it happened in order for there to be a marriage the bridegroom would have to make a journey from his house to the house of the bride. Had, no matter where she lived, didn't matter how poor, didn't matter what her house was like, he had to go there. No matter how far he had to go there, 
they'd have to they welcome him in. He'd come in there and he'd have to offer up a treasure for her that showed his love for her that would set her free from her house. And so that and if she said yes, she probably never saw the guy before. She said, Oh, yes, I'll go with him. They would share a cup of wine together, a cup of covenant, pledge each other to each other, and then they would be considered husband and wife. But then he would leave go back to his house and they would be separated for a year or more. This was the great preparation. And she would spend the time getting ready for the marriage, getting getting ready to leave, say goodbye to her home, her childhood, everything she knew for a new life. And she'd get herself ready and become beautiful, get ready. While the, the bridegroom would spend that time preparing a house, a yeah. home for his future bride. Yeah. And then finally the day would come, usually be at night and with great festivity. The bridegroom would be dressed up as a king with a crown, with his men, with torches and a great procession. He'd make one more journey from his house to her house. They'd be waiting for her. The bride is dressed up as a queen, beautiful, bathed and, and with, with riches around her and with her, her, her maidens around her. And the bridegroom would come and they would look at each other. She'd remove her veil. For the first time, they see themselves face to face, all dressed up there. They'd be lifted up by their friends onto the sedan chair, carried away in one big procession away from the house of the bride. she looked look back. she see her house for the last time as, as her house, and she'd be going to a place she never saw before. Then finally, she sees the home that's prepared for her, and she gets welcomed in. She sits under uh, this hoopah, this canopy yes. with her I groom as king and queen. They share a cup of wine to seal the marriage. They slip off together, become one. And here is the mystery. When you hear about the bride and the groom, it's about you and God. Because if you are, if you are, you know, first of all, if you know God, you're the bride. If you don't, if you, don't you are born to be the bride. And that's why I mentioned before, you can never be filled. That's why you're always trying to marry your soul to something. Yes. But you can never do it until you find him. And the bridegroom is God. And he is the fulfillment. And the thing is, you were made for, her, for him. And the thing is that, according to the mystery, the bridegroom has to make the journey from his house to the bride's house. So 2,000 years ago, according to the mystery, the bridegroom of your soul came and journeyed yes. from his house, heaven, to earth, our house, the house of the bride, and he journeys not just that, he journeys to your house, wherever you are, he's the God who comes to you, you don't have to come to him, he comes to you, knocks on the door, open up, and there he pledges, he offers up a treasure for you, his love, not silver or gold, his life, his life, his blood, that's the that's the bridal price, and then if you say yes, it becomes yours, you become, you become a bride and groom, you share that cup. Remember, he shared a cup. Yeah. Then, according to the mystery, he's got to go. So he said, he, 2,000 years ago, he said, I have to go. I'm going to return. I'm going to go to my, my father's house. I'm going to go there to prepare a place for you. So he went back to heaven, is preparing a place right now. Now wow. is the great separation. He's preparing a place for us that we could we can't even imagine as how good it is. And we are to prepare our place now, not to get richer, not to get more, not to get, yes. but to but to but to get ourselves ready to become more beautiful for our bridegroom, to be able to say goodbye, to get beautiful and get ready for that day. And then the day is going to come where the bridegroom has to make a second coming. So he comes now. This time he'll come not in glory he'll come he'll come in glory as a king dressed up to come us not to just make a covenant but now to take us home yes. and so whether that day comes whether we're living when that day comes or whether we whenever you leave this life if you're with him you're gonna that's gonna be their wedding day and he's gonna take you take you from your old home you're gonna see it this whole thing is gone the childhood is gone all the past is gone the bad is gone and you're gonna enter into a place that was prepared for you in the love of God for you and for the first time in your life you're gonna be home wow Man, I'm in tears. What a, an amazing thought process. It's our job to become beautiful yes. in this life. We're supposed to be the bride who's blameless and spotless with no blemish. Wow. And this it's world, his this world love thing. that does that yeah. in us. Without his love, we cannot yes. and will not yes. accomplish that. But what an amazing thing. If we actually saw it this way, the kind of preparation we would do in our own lives, preparing ourselves for him to take us to that place. Is, yeah. That is life-changing. Rabbi, that's absolutely life changing. And I feel like I'm on that journey yes. without knowing what you just said. 
Wow. But it's been my yearning is to please him, to prepare myself for him, yes. to um, iron yes. out my salvation <laughs> yes. in fear and it, trembling and respect for him for that moment. This yeah. is Danny Johnson. We've got Jonathan Kahn, the new book, The Book of Mysteries. We'll continue with more right after this. Don't go away. The next segment might just change your life. This is The Danny Johnson Show. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. You want to succeed, right? But you do not want to fail God at the same time. There is a way to succeed from a biblical perspective, and it's far greater than anything you could ever imagine. Over 500 scriptures I studied to study money, everything that the Bible said about money. That's in the first couple chapters of Spirit Driven Success. Not to mention leadership, working with people, growing a career, being used mightily in the marketplace, which is where Abraham, God used him in the marketplace. And Joseph, God used him in the marketplace. Moses, God used him in the marketplace. Daniel, Solomon, really all of the greats of faith, most of the greats of faith throughout the Bible. They all were in the marketplace, and God wants to show you how you can be used mightily by Him in the marketplace. Right here, Spirit Driven Success is where all of my notes are on how you can do that. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Spirit Driven Success today. It's time to take on a whole new mindset. This is The Danny Johnson Show. So Jonathan, you were just